Welcome back, everyone, to Nanaliza Dunn. I remain your host, or rather, uh, that's my exhibition match name. To the Renegade 3v3 tournament recap, I'm your host, Dominic. And we are on to the bracket stage. So, the last map I did, or the last match I did, I, as far as I can tell, was the also the first match for the brackets. I'm not sure how that works, but it at least as far as the forum post related to the tournament goes, yeah, apparently that was the last round, or that was that was the bracket round rather than the. I think it was both Swiss and bracket. I'm not sure exactly what happened. The way Shaman had it set up, it looked like it was the same game. So at any rate, we apparently already watched the first semifinals, but now we're on to the second semifinals, which is on Mini Super Speed Metal Wide between Team 400 and Team X. Oh yeah, Team XCOM, but Anarchy had swapped in. So let's get to it. I've never done a match on Super Speed Metal, which is, as the name suggests, full of metal. Like, it's. You just build metal extractors wherever the heck you want, I think. Yeah, you can just build metal extractors where, wherever you want. It's a bit weird, and every metal extractor gives you just thousands and thousands of metal. So we should see weird things happening. I mean, one metal extractor is more than anyone can really use it's your energy you're energy starved at this point that's basically how it works it's just build as much energy as you can we'll probably see a lot of fusion reactors probably see a lot of singularity reactors and team xcom doing the merged commander thing they're playing a pacific rim style they're they're entering the drift all right so maybe team mumble didn't do that every time but team xcom is taking up that mantle at any rate so Spider's Air Shields, I always mention this before, kind of mention it now. So Spider Shields and... Uh, spider Shields and Air for the Eastern Team, for Team 400, and Team XCOM, Air, Rovers, and Cloakies. Although I'm curious if and when someone's going to go for something like Striders, or other ridiculous things. Striders, Nuke Silos, I don't know. I mean, you could build a Silencer if you wanted to in this map pretty easily. Just a matter of getting the energy for it, but the metal is there, the energy is pretty easy. I mean, at this point, Team XCOM's already got two fusion reactors. Just need to build a second one, and then you're good. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised this was in the tournament, but eh, it was a renegade tournament, so why not do something weird? Why not have stuff like this? Although, actually, yeah, Team 400's got a lot of energy coming in here. The, like, they used wind generators to get up to the point where they could build fusion reactors, which I kind of like as an idea. Of course, now there's not much energy left, but hey, I managed to get most of the fusion reactor built in the process, so that still works. Anyway, the air battle is definitely becoming a bit of an issue, and I'm not surprised, given that this map does have one tiny little choke point between the two bases that's on the ground. The air battle being the focus seems to make sense to me. At the same time, though, like I said, the economy is in favor of Team 400. And especially once the wind generators pick up again, it'll definitely be in favor, because again, energy is the only real restriction here. At least until one team manages to get more than 2,000 energy. At which point it's more build power than energy, and then you just get a bunch of strider hubs and use them like caretakers. It seems like the most sensible thing to do to me. Or maybe just get a bunch of caretakers. I don't know, it seems like space is the biggest concern at that point. Also the big concern being this glaive coming up front, but again, even that glaive dealing the damage it's dealing, it's not quite enough yet. It would have been a problem a little while ago, but with the fusion reactors being built up quite quickly, I mean, really, the fusion reactors are being built up way faster for Team 400 than they are for Team XCOM. So Team 400 very rapidly turning that small economic advantage coming in from the wind generators into a massive economic advantage through all these fusion plants, as well as the additional caretakers, which, granted, most of them are not really in range for this, but they are going to be in range for the planned tactical nuke silo. Or Tactical Missile Silo, which probably will just see a bunch of Infernos. Not really Aeoses, no Tactical Nukes, most likely. Aeoses are still good, though. Sorry, not Aeoses. Infernos are still good, though. Infernos are still really good. That's generally the option. No, they are going for Tactical Nukes. Interesting. Probably going to see if they can nail the Fusion Reactors, because if they can, that's going to be game. That's all they really need to do. If they get that, then their opponents basically have no build power available, because they don't have the energy available, and then it's just a win for Team 400. So... That's what I expect. I don't know if they are entirely aware of where those fusion reactors are, though. Oh, they are! Yep, they got ghosts. No, nope, they're good. They know exactly where they are. And that's one down! It's already, that's a crippling blow. Should get the other two down pretty quickly, but then we will see that go the other way, too. The Aeoses are being built up on both sides. There's one Aeos there, and the fusion reactor positions are well known, as is the missile silo position. And the 
AOS needs to be fired ASAP. I mean, that's the thing. This needs... If that gets fired, destroys another... Okay, destroy one more fusion plant. There is one more AOS left. There is one more fusion plant left. Oh, never mind. It was destroying the... Destroy the fusion plant. Destroyed the tactical new silo. Interesting choice. But... Yeah, the whole point here is to get rid of the fusion plants. Now, granted, the main point has been achieved, because Team XCOM has half the economy of Team 400. But ideally, they can get rid of all the fusion plants, and then not lose any of theirs, because, I mean, as soon as the tactical missile silo comes up for Team XCOM, that's going to be the fusion plants gone. Ooh, actually, smart choice. I mean, it doesn't get rid of the fusion plant, but it does get rid of all the caretakers. So that's still a great way to reduce the amount of build power that's available. Even if they don't kill all the fusion plants, they do at least stop the assisting. But still, once an AOS is done, that is a dead fusion plant for Team 400. Now, one of them hasn't been scouted yet. This one over here that's being constructed has not yet been scouted. And at the same time, the front line is under such heavy fire. It may not even matter. But there's that, I believe, an AOS coming in there. And no, it's a... Is that Inferno? What's looks like an Inferno, actually. Nope, that's an AOS trying to get rid of the missile silo. And it's not going to be enough. There's too much repair coming in here. The other end, though... Nice AO shot on the commander, getting rid of basically the only real front-line defense, and that is the game. Getting rid of Team XCOM by smashing the commander, and that was the shortest semifinal match ever. So yeah, people in the chat pointing out that they, they hated this game and stuff. Yeah, okay, fair enough. That was, I mean, I don't ever watch or play speed metal. So to me, that was kind of interesting. There's the tactical calculus of getting the missile silo to get rid of fusion plants because that's the only thing the opponents have that's really vulnerable unless you i guess nail the metal extractor that's the other option because then that would cut everything off but the metal extractor is easy to rebuild fusion plants not so much so you nail the fusion plants that cuts off your opponent's economy and it's a pretty basic calculus to it but it creates an interesting little tension because of course team xcom they had their own missile silo and was about to start nailing the fusion reactors of team 400 but team 400 managed to get theirs their missile silo up sooner and as a result, was able to get rid of the fusion plant sooner and snowball that into a victory. It's a really basic thing that's really only fun maybe once or twice. Like, it's, you know, it's a game of chicken. That's all it really is. But games of chicken can be fun occasionally. Assuming you aren't actually playing chicken, like, in a car with actual people in it who die in the process of being hit. But, you know, apart from that bit, the, the concept of a game of chicken can be fun sometimes. Actually, playing chicken is extremely deadly and would not re recommend it. But within the context of a computer game and speed metal type thing, yeah, it totally works. Maybe kind of think of DEFCON, actually. Which is also kind of the same boat of trying to hit your opponents before they hit you in your strategic locations. Anyway, that was the semifinals. So we're moving on to the finals fairly soon once I get that replay loaded up. Pretty sure everything's the way I expect it to be with the finals. So... Yeah, I'm not sure exactly how things were set up there. But my guess is they are not too different. So, yeah, we'll get that. Actually, no, we'll get the third place match first. Because the third place match is the one that's going to be really important. And then after that will be the finals. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's something I really thought of before. Like I said, I don't play or watch speed metal, so it's not something... This is very new to me. Anyway, back to the bracket, though. We have Team Pluck versus Team 400 in the finals, but first we'll have the bronze match between Team Mumble and Team XCOM. Hey, rematch of the first round. So that'll be up in a couple seconds. <laughs> 